We welcome you back to the Chick-fil-A kickoff game presented by Southwest Airlines. We're at the Georgia Dome, Atlanta, Georgia, Alabama, and Virginia Tech. Two top ten preseason teams. You can see how close Tuscaloosa is, less than 200 miles from Atlanta. And then 325 to the north. That's where Virginia Tech is. Nick Saban, his third season as the Bama head coach. And on the other side, Frank Beamer played at Virginia Tech and now in his 23rd season as their head coach. So we get ready for a moment and they're going to rock the Georgia Dome, folks. So we're going to let the audio just bring it on in. They are locked and loaded. have shared the duties under center and now it is his team the coaches feel he's ready to take that next step and what a challenge for him he's very athletic we know he can run we know he can throw he's going up against one of the top defenses in the country this he can settle down and make some plays ryan williams the starting tailback up a couple of yards and the impact players Kirk for Tech. Well with Darren Evans out for the year in camp with an ACL we know about Tyrod Taylor and what he has to do again not just running but tonight showing he can throw the backup running backs are now starting running backs Ryan Williams who had the first carry great size and quickness and then keep an eye on David Nelson number four he'll get a chance to carry the ball tonight electrifying speed for a true freshman number four. Second down, pulls it away on the option look as he brings one of his wide receivers to the outside. Danny Cole, number 19, on the end of round. Last few years for Virginia Tech on this side of the football, and for the most part, it's been inconsistent. They've had a lot of youth on the offensive line. Last year, breaking in an entire new group of skill around the quarterbacks. They feel this year, Frank Beamer thinks they're going to settle down and have a little bit more of a potent offensive attack with Tyrod Taylor and company. Here comes your third down. Oglesby and Williams are alongside Taylor. And a timeout is called by Tyrod first of the evening. And he immediately goes up and he's talking to his center, Bo Warren. Warren, of course, is giving away a lot of pounds to Cody, the big nose man. There was an incident involving a shooting of a defensive lineman at Alabama. And let us check in with Lisa Salters. I think, uh, yeah, Dedrick's in uniform and ready to go. Lisa, what's the story down there? Well, uh, Brent, I spoke to Brandon Dedrick before the game, and I said, how do you feel, Big Fell? And he said, I feel great. And that's really remarkable considering that just on Monday night, he was shot in a parking lot just off of campus. He and his girlfriend were getting out of a car when they were approached by a guy with a gun wearing a mask who said, give it up. Well, Dedrick didn't give it up, and there was a struggle. He was shot in his left forearm. The, the bullet went through his arm and lodged, went through his hip, in his hip, and then out his inner thigh. I, it was described to me by Nick Saban just as a through and through, kind of like a puncture wound. Didn't hit any bones, didn't hit any arteries. He was medically cleared to play on late earlier in this week. His parents wanted him to play, and he wanted to play. Nick Saban, though, said that he struggled with the decision because of perception. He didn't want to look like he was being irresponsible. He said the kids done all the right things. How could he say not to play? So he's going to be out here playing, Brett. Right? And he will watch this third and two. The option inside shuttle pass. 
the Bama defense is right there with one of the great linebackers, McLean, who had a huge game against Clemson last year. That's what the Alabama defense is based on, the linebacker play. Lisa just talked about the defensive lineman who has shot Dederick. The entire defensive line tries to eat up the blocks and turn the linebackers, McLean and Hightower, loose to make plays. And that time they forced the three and out for Tyrod Taylor and the Hokies. Here's the story. Javier Arenas, six career touchdowns, and he returned 41 punts last year, averaging 15 yards of return. Now, Brent Bowden with his hands full against Arenas. Arenas, a true weapon here tonight. Trying to hang it up for his gunners to get down. On the move, Arenas feels it far side and is quickly forced out of bounds. So now it will be McElroy's turn. Well, here, if you imagine how this young man feels from South Lake, Texas, Carroll High School. He replaced Chase Daniel in high school. Now he gets a chance to replace John Parker Wilson in Alabama. He has been on the bench as a backup quarterback. He's making his first career start. Sure, he has plenty of jitters. Let's see how Alabama tries to get him to just get into a rhythm and a groove within this football game. Mark Ingram, number 22, you look behind him. He's the starting. Ingram taking a direct snap. McElroy is up at the top of the screen. So the Wildcat is the opening look identified by the defensive line. And he will run it off to the right behind the right side of the offensive line on first down. One of the things that they feel they have to do to slow down Bud Foster's defense is give them some looks that maybe they haven't prepared for for the last seven or eight months. And I thought they might ease it in, but the very first play, the talented sophomore back taking the direct snap, Ingram. There's Julio Jones. Ingram keeps it and picks up a few yards. Just something for Virginia Tech to think about. And Julio was not jogging. He was coming <laughs> at full speed. So we look for that down the road. Now McElroy throws for a first down, puts it into Jones's hands, and look at how big Julio Jones is as a sophomore. He was impressive last year as a freshman, but folks, he is so much broader. Look at him in the shoulders. And a great call by Coach McElway and the offensive coordinator. Just a simple read, a quick throw. The defensive back, Virgil, goes down, and you don't want to do that. <laughs> against Julio Jones and there that's, that's that's what you want to see as a coach and a play caller first time starting for a quarterback put that right arm in and believing in himself into Virginia Tech territory broken play McElroy will keep it and makes the most out of it for a yard so how about the impact players for Alabama well McElroy making his first start is very fortunate to have some talent around him Mark Ingram looking at him in practice last year he surprised us this year he has become a man with an offseason to prepare Julio Jones I think could be the top receiver in the entire nation they'll try to get the ball vertically downfield to try to get some one-on-one -on -one opportunities and Colin Peake a transfer from Georgia Tech sat out last year once they get into the red zone they'll look to get number 84 of the ball in the back of the end zone Second and nine. McElroy forced to take off. Close to a first down. I believe he has it. Fine run by McElroy who tucked it away. A simple decision here, but a great decision. The defensive back, Rashad Carmichael, took this play away. So instead of taking a chance and a risk, he decides to pull it down. Caught the linebackers by surprise because he committed so much to the outside and there's room to run. Picks up a, or not quite picks up a first down, but picks up some valuable yardage. Very close. Third down. You can see how close he is to that yellow line, which is not official. Smelly and dial. And they see a direct snap to Ingram again. Picks it up and a whistle prior to the snap. Before the snap, live game. Offense. One of the consequences right. for correction prior to the clock running out, we have a timeout okay. on the Alabama sideline. Be the first time out of the half. So Saban saw they were running out of time and alertly called the timeout. And the line judge over there on that side picked it up. So we've got a timeout. We're going to take a break. Alabama on the move here on their first possession.
So the Wildcat formation has been used a couple of times, but now they come out without it, and Ingram is behind the lead blocker, McElroy, third down and very short from the Hokie 31-yard line. Ingram tackled in the backfield by Bud Foster's aggressive D. Thrown for a loss for the first time tonight, and that was Nikos Brown hitting him first, number 47. Brent, you're all over it. Nikos Brown gets great penetration, and this young man is fired up watching him get to the inside, and he just blows up this play. He's going up right there, a guard trying to come around, and Barrett Jones, he's just not quick enough, and by the time he comes around, Nikos Brown and company are already there making a play. Huge play by Virginia Tech here early in this game on third down. And Tiffin will attempt a 49-yard. Long enough, and the veteran Lee Tiffin puts the tide up by three. Timeout in Atlanta. Well, here in Atlanta, Alabama strikes first with a field goal. back at the goal line and he battles his way to the 21 well the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series right here in Atlanta begins Sunday at 7 Eastern on ESPN presented by Pennzoil and one of the huge Virginia Tech fans Denny Hamlin standing fourth in the overall standings is here and we'll hear from him in the second half if the Hokies are playing Hamlin is paying attention and of course there's only two more races in the NASCAR circuit before the chase begins. So it's shakedown time for drivers like Kyle Busch. They got to pick up some points. There's the big tight end Boone moving over to the right side of the Hokie formation. Tyrod Taylor gets good time. Can't find a receiver downfield and throws it away. Second down. But Herbie, two things stand out. There must have been great coverage downfield. I was watching Tyrod, but the offensive line was giving him time. Partner, we had the whole thing covered. I had the secondary covered. You had Tyrod Taylor. That's exactly what I was looking at. Young Mark Barron, who's a sophomore, making a start for Rashad Johnson, who was so valuable to this defense a year ago, took away Greg Boone, who was trying to go vertical. And right away, Tyrod Taylor tried to come off of him and make something happen. But this defense is too fast. You've got to make quick decisions. Look at it. Bam is showing blitz, and Tyrod Taylor's thinking about moving Greg Boone over, but elects not to. Got three on the play clock. Got to burn it. Wow. So when we talk about managing a game, and you put your finger right on it, right there. Kirby, when you said you've got to be quicker against this Alabama defense because they're so quick and talented and they're moving around a lot on it. Well, and, and they're they're so uh, multiple. They, they play a 3-4 defense, which means they have three defensive linemen and four linebackers. College offenses don't see a lot of that. So they're able to mix up their looks, confuse the quarterback, confuse the offensive line. And what's exciting for me to watch is Tyrod Taylor is a third-year quarterback. The coaches feel he's ready for this. He's worked his tail off in the offseason in the weight room and in the film room to be ready to face this kind of defense they've only had the ball twice but right now you can see he's just trying to get comfortable and settle in and go from the film room to the practice field to in front of 70,000 people and all of a sudden that Alabama defense is moving a little bit quicker than the, the scout team now remember now the Hokies have burned two timeouts in the first two possessions it'll be 940 this is an FCC crew that's a referee Austin Outstanding officiating crew here tonight. And opening weekend, the Chick fil A kickoff game. A year ago, Alabama ran away from Clemson. But already we have seen that this veteran Virginia Tech line is holding off that rush much better than Clemson did because remember, they were an untested, brand new offensive line. Now, Big Cody gets down in the nose, and here's Taylor, second down and 10. Snaps it off complete. Putting a, a 
again in the hands of Danny Cole. Remember they used him on an end around earlier today. Most important thing for Virginia Tech to avoid against this defense are third and longs. Alabama's defense in 2008, they were third in the nation, allowing only 28% conversion rate because they're creative. As I said, sometimes they'll blitz, sometimes they'll rush three and drop eight, but they're constantly making the offensive line and the quarterback think with giving them different looks. In trouble. Dashes away with his speed. Tyron, left hand incomplete. Throws it out of bounds, and there is a flag. Illegal pass, grounding. There was no one there as he ran toward the sideline and dumped it off. Potential grounding, number five of the offense. Lost him down to the spot of the foul. Fourth down. Brent, this is exactly what I'm talking about with some confusion up front on the offensive line. Watch the left guard and the left tackle. Penetration will come right here. It's just poor communication. You see the left guard, Sergio Render. He doesn't have anybody to block. He came down instead of going out to be able to pick up the blitzer, Eric Anders. Arenas is back again, and he figures to give Alabama excellent field position. The Hokies are punting a shadow with their own end zone. Checking the gunners, fields it at the 39, looks for an alley into Virginia Tech territory. They'll play with half a field. What a weapon. A slow start. Taylor on the phone. The coach is trying to help him. You're watching Saturday Night Football on ABC. All right, Matt, and here the crowd, Herbie, is starting to settle in. And a little bit of unease over there on the Virginia Tech side on that far side. They have seen how fast and tough this defense is. Yeah, Renus gives them great field position. Typically with Nick Saban, Jim McElwain, the offense coordinator, this would be the time where you would see maybe a Julio Jones vertical down the field and take a shot. They haven't done it yet. Wouldn't surprise me with great field position here on this series to eventually try to get the ball downfield in number eight. McElroy looking downfield, trying to get him, and he overthrew him. They had him. You called it, Herbie, as they moved him a little bit to change the defensive look in the secondary, and they had him open. Yeah, with great field position and the way they dominated the game on the other side of the ball, that's usually where they're willing to take a bit of a chance, and they had it. He got behind Chancellor, the safety, had the opportunity, and McElroy will tell you, and he told us uh, a couple days ago, the pass that he likes to throw the most is the ball downfield and watching him in practice. I don't know if it ever touched the turf until that throw right there on the deep ball. Second and ten. Dropping the middle screen off and upended and a penalty flag comes flying. Going to get a holding call on the junior college left tackle James Carpenter. Young man trying to fill the, the shoes of the Outland Trophy winner. Big Smith, who was first round draft Andre choice Smith, of yeah. the Cincinnati Bengals, and uh, unfortunately for the big fella, he has Holding. a broken foot now. Offense 77. 10 yard penalty for the previous spot. Repeat second down. You know, that's one of the questions about this offense. Not only do you lose, lose John Parker Wilson, but three of the five starting uh, offensive linemen. So much talk about Smith, but Antoine Caldwell, the center, was really the glue of this offense. So that's the mystery about this team, breaking in a new quarterback and three new offensive linemen, especially the left tackle. McElroy pounding and balls loose and squirting out of there. And a good, tough run that time by Ingram. Here's a huge advantage tonight for Alabama, even though they are inexperienced with three new Starters up front. Look at the size. It's the exception of the center. Everybody else has great size. And Virginia Tech to be able to defend them, they're going to have to play with with attitude, an aggressive attitude, and trying to get to that football. Third down and 16 for McElroy. Pressure from the defense. McElroy has time. Goes deep. And 
beautiful catch by Hanks at the 15-yard line. Full extension makes the grab on third and 16. There's the deep ball by McElroy. Outstanding protection up front. How about Mark Ingram, the running back, picking up the blitz? What a sensational grab over his shoulder by Hanks. Ingram coming right back and stop. Jason Worlds making the stop. Brent, look at this. Virginia Tech brought everybody. They're one on one on the outside, and that's a matchup that Alabama will take every time. One of their talented receivers up against a big safety at 6'4, 230 pounds. He gets right behind him. And again, there's the confidence from McElroy. It is interesting that they've been able to isolate receivers on the talented safety chancellor. They think they've got a speed advantage there, and they have gone there twice. Roy gets time, fires in zone incomplete. And that time it was Mays, number four, was breaking toward the back of the end zone. Remember now that the quarterback McElroy back at Carroll High School back in Texas he replaced the legendary high school quarterback at the time Chase Daniel. What did he do. He led Carroll to a 5 a championship. He beat Katie Texas and in that title game that's the last time that McElroy would have started. He was headed for one of the Texas schools but he came over here tasted the tradition at Alabama. He was sold on it and here he is tonight. picked off a dangerous throw and coming beautifully in underneath with Jake Johnson he did not read him the last time on third down Virginia Tech went with an all out blitz and left themselves isolated man to man this time they sit back in zone and how about Jake Johnson simply reading the eyes of the quarterback it led him right out to Julio Jones and I actually think that was predetermined by Bud Foster getting two defenders one in front and one behind Julio Jones on third down. Fitzgerald to hold for Tiffin. Made the 49 yarder. He'll attempt to add the 34 yarder, which he does. And so Tiffin makes it a six point Alabama advantage. Defense. That's what a lot of the experts said this would be, and that's what we're seeing so far. Metlaff provides coverage of major sporting events while also providing you with guarantees for the ifs and life. Visit metlife.com. Today, so the offense of Alabama huddling up there, Herbie. They lead because of Tiffin's right foot. Well, Virginia Tech pretty fortunate that their defense has buckled down and forced the field goals to to stay in this football game. There's Bud Foster, one of the top defensive coordinators in college football over the years, keeping his team in this game and trying to give Tyrod Taylor and the offense a little time to just settle down and try to win the battle on the line of scrimmage. Busy right leg. And a good one. Fielded at the three by Roberts again. Looks for Crease on the left side. 35, 40, 45. Look out. Foot race. Battles him with a stiff arm. Touchdown on the kickoff. Roberts, 98 yards. We're tied pending the extra point. How about that stiff arm as he came down toward the red zone? Roberts is a sophomore receiver from Smithfield, Virginia, and he just lit up the Virginia Tech crowd. I hate to state the obvious, but that is why they call it Beamer Ball in Blacksburg, Virginia. Puts them right back into this football game and ignites this football team. Waldron, rookie kicker, transfer for Penn State, hasn't kicked in about four years. And he puts the Hokies ahead for the first time tonight. Well, this is a great job of blocking by Virginia Tech. And then once Roberts gets to the outside, and this is what you're talking about, Marquise Johnson is walking him. He's got him. He's got him down. But Roberts showing some great strength with that stiff arm. And then to have the balance to get into the end zone. He starts to run out of gas here a little bit. Johnson catches up to him. He's trying to just bring him down, push him out of bounds. The stiff arm and into the end zone. And how important 
is Virginia Tech and the way their defense has played the force to field goals and how quickly a game that's been pretty one-sided all of a sudden can turn around in a hurry. The emotions, how they swing in a game like this. turn and they've got two dangerous fellows back. Arenas you've seen returning punts and Terry Grant number 29 a couple of years ago had a great season as the lead rusher lost that job a year ago but he's a playmaker and he hung with this team and Saban's determined to give him a chance. Coming out and he is stopped. 15. Let's go to Matt Weiner in our Times Square studio in New York for an update. Matt, a, a cream puff, Matt. Florida's playing a cream puff. And we see Ingram. Oh, letters. Back in the Wildcat, and this time it's Jones. Remember, I told you he was coming around. What was interesting, Herbie, that time he was not flying when he came around like he did on the fake on the first time they showed that. And it gave Virgil plenty of time to come in an open field tackle. It's pretty tough to do against Julio Jones. Not only the kickoff return gets Virginia Tech on the board, but the average starting field position before that kickoff return, Bam had started close to midfield. Now they're all the way back inside their own 15-yard line, so it changes momentum, it gives you points, and it also clearly changes the field and tilts it in the favor of Virginia Tech. So Grant will stay in as the running back. The line blocks to the right. McElroy had a little bit of daylight, but there is Jake Johnson and a penalty flag coming down at the end of it. And you know what that indicates over there. That's a young linebacker getting pretty emotional in front of a crowd that's become pretty, pretty lively. Jake Johnson cannot make this play. Virginia Tech was ready to put Alabama into another third down situation. Personal foul, 26 of the defense. 15 yard penalty dead of the run. Automatic first down. Dorian Porridge had taken away the throw, and McElroy again, it's pretty much one read, and second or third time we've seen him take off and run. And Johnson's fine here, but then he grabs him around the neck and kind of has a whiplash effect there, taking him out of bounds. First down for the tie. Look at this. Protecting the quarterback. Yeah. First down and ten. Now McElroy back in the gut. Nothing doing. Running backs continue to battle away with Grant. And that was Thompson making the stop. Well, you can see the number of plays that Alabama has had here tonight compared with Virginia Tech. And of course, about a 12 second, 98 yard kickoff return gave Tech the tie, and then the extra point put them up by one. We're just inside of five minutes. First quarter, Chick fil A kickoff game, Atlanta, Georgia, between Alabama, the SEC, and Virginia Tech of the ACC. Back now in the pistol. Roy firing out of it. Jones almost made a circus catch. He was battling Dorian Porch. In the pistol, going to play action. And this is one of the formations that college coaches use to try to use as a as something to try to hide what they want to do. Porch gets back right away. As soon as he realized it was a pass, like any smart defensive back facing Julio Jones, right away his head's on a swivel and he's trying to find number eight. And that's what Bud Foster and Virginia Tech, they've schooled their players. Make somebody else besides Julio Jones beat us in the passing game. You can see they're looking him up every throw. Upchurch checks in, fake to him. McElroy going to take off again. 
breaks a tackle. He's had a couple of fine looking runs here tonight. Chancellor making the stop. They're giving Greg McElroy a lot of low risk decisions here in this game right now where it's either make a throw to a Julio Jones if he's not there just take off and run or find your check down. Fitzgerald will be punted for the first time and Ryan Williams one of the tailbacks is back deep. He were a little bit concerned about his punt returners coming into this game and a timeout and that would exhaust the Virginia Tech, the Virginia the Tech timeouts. timeout. That's all three. Well, with one version that would have tied it for the Naval Academy is intercepted and results in a two point play the other way. But the Buckeyes sweated that one out. Sure did. Maybe played a great football game and I think the thing between those two teams that stood out to me of everything the way Matt Barkley and USC played Matt Barkley all this hype about a true freshman stepping in for Mark Sanchez. How would he do? I think he finished up 15 of 19 which is a pretty good start. I don't care who you're playing. That's a good start for Matt Barkley before he comes to Columbus next week. And I don't care what was going on in the Coliseum. The shoe will be a different kind of setting <laughs> for that young man. Here is Fitzgerald, a beautiful punt. Fair catch signaled by William Fumble. And that is what Beamer was concerned about in practice. Alabama football, turn it over. And that is definitely not Beamer ball. As you said, this is something you just don't expect to see. And Ryan Williams doesn't catch the football with his hands. He lets the ball get through his hands, can come off his pads, and he just lost his concentration, Brent. I think he looked down. He might have peeked down and saw Alabama coming downfield. The long snapper, Brian Selman. How many times have we seen them come down the field yep. uncovered? He recovers the punt, gives McElroy and the tide. Excellent striking position at the Hokie 16 yard line on the turnover. Terry Grant, the junior, has checked in to the football game in the backfield, and a lot of times they like to throw the football to him. I even out of the backfield sometimes lined up as a wide receiver. Hanks in motion receiver. Terry Johnson couldn't get to him. About a yard, so Grant looking for the edge. Johnson was coming from behind, and Chris Hill, along with Jason Worlds, makes that stop. That offense looking for a little rhythm. They've been a little herky jerky. Some very good plays and then some not so good. Let's see what Mac comes up with here. Incomplete. So now that'll bring up Herbie a big third down. And uh, this would frustrate this offense if they wind up settling for still a third field goal here tonight after having uh, this kind of field position. It's a big opportunity for Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide. They've had their chances down here, and as you said, they just are not able to close the deal. I know their tight end, Colin Peak, is a big target that they like to try to find to the middle of the back of the end zone, try to split the safeties if they can find him for a touchdown, and also always Julio Jones. No snap, fielded. Still waiting, hit on the release, and throws it out of the back of the end zone, incomplete. And I would think here comes Tiffin again. What I'm seeing right now from Virginia Tech is I think they're having more success when they give Greg McElroy zone, where he has to sit back and actually read and react to the defense. If they play man to man, he seems to be able to get into a rhythm and play a little backyard football, make easy throws. I wouldn't be surprised to see Bud Foster continue to make go to zone and have him make decisions. 32 yard getting shorter by the minute 49 34 and now his third one 
is 32. So Tiffin regains the lead for Alabama with his third field goal of the first half. Time out. You know, it's interesting, Herbie, uh, when you analyze a game prior to the start of it, uh, frequently we're dead wrong. Uh, but this time, <laughs> dead right. But we said tough defensive game, looking for mistakes, and uh, kicking game could really be huge. Though. Yeah, and, and it has been for both teams. I mean, it, imagine this. You, you almost get midway through, not midway, almost towards the end of the first quarter. You don't have a first down, and you're only down 9-7. to seven. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> You're not moving a football at all at this point, the first few possessions. And uh, because of that big return, that's how important that return was for Virginia Tech. And we will see how they defend the young man this time. When they, <laughs> yeah. I dare say that the special teams coaches for Alabama would have had a little huddle down there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's, no way, there's no way they can allow 11 Roberts to take this one back. But uh, we'll see. This will be interesting to see if they kick to him. his way back to the 25 yard line. Well no NFL foot west don't you think? Almost just by showing up. Yes. I think they have to run Tyrod Taylor. I know they wanted to show that he can throw but use his feet to be able to run and make plays. This time he completes the pass in underneath and that's Danny Cole again and Danny Cole has become his favorite target in practice. Picked up a first down. First That's one of the night. First yeah. yeah, first one of the night. I, I you know, talking with their coaches and, and listening to Tyrod Taylor, he's so anxious to show people that he can throw the football. That, and, and because they don't have a proven backup, I don't know how comfortable they are in running him, but it's such an asset to have him run that I think they can't be afraid to use that ability to, especially against the defense that plays so much man coverage. Inside handoff and uh, Crimson Tide ready for it as Ryan Williams gets the call and Eric Enders makes the stop. Talk to any defensive coordinator in the country with the spread formation spreading throughout the country. The one thing that they just cannot stand is a quarterback who's mobile is Ryan Williams. Looks a little gimpy there going off. But a, a, a quarterback who can hurt you running and throwing is their worst nightmare. Williams and as he stoned by Mark Barron who has stepped into that starting safety spot fine special teams player last year but now they're counting on him in the secondary Herbie. Yep Mark Barron is going to have to be able to do this a lot for this Alabama defense Hightower just not quite getting there and that is for Alabama fans at home watching they're excited to see Mark Barron out of Mobile Alabama step up right there great tackle come up and knock down that running back over here we saw Brandon Dederick so remember, he was shot in a boarded robbery attempt last Monday out on the field back at that tackle spot. So that's a first down for the Hokies. And there you see number 95 out on the field. And there you can see that heavily taped left arm. It is just remarkable that this young man is able to play here tonight and uh, the Virginia Tech coaches are breaking down last year's Chick-fil-A game. They said that Cody occupied two blockers but that big Dederick made all the plays in that Clemson backfield. They said he is a powerful powerful load. First down and ten off the play action. Taylor dances away beautiful action to gain time and then completes the pass to Oglesby the running back that was great footwork by Tyrod Tyrod Taylor buying time to be able to eventually make the throw gives you an idea of his foot quickness and what he can do and then the vision downfield how about the concentration by Oglesby to concentrate make the catch and he got his leg down in bounds for another Virginia Tech first down by far their best drive that we've seen tonight. This will be their first snap in Alabama territory. Now the 
pistol for the Hokies and the option out of it to pitch to Oglesby trying to get a corner. Too much speed on that defense. Alabama just closed off that corner when the linebackers are kept clean. They can come over there. Hightower and Anders were right there along with Woodall, the safety. But with a slow developing play like this, you've got to get great perimeter blocking by your wide receivers. And Boykin is trying to take on Woodall, an experienced physical safety, number 27. And he went right through the uh, receiver Boykin to be able to make that play. So three Alabama field goals and a kickoff return by Virginia Tech, 9-7. In this presentation of Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines, will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. Remember, Jermaine Gresham, the All-American tight end, also out and breaking in four new offensive linemen. The Sooners are struggling tonight in Dallas. Third down and 12. Tyrod steps up, but cannot escape as Alabama collapses the pocket and big Orlando McLean makes the stop, but they just simply blew that pocket up. This what a defense. Oh, boy. This is Alabama. This is Nick Saban on third down. This is what they try to do to you. This time they elect to bring a lot of pressure. We've seen this early in this football game when they get them to third down. They're trying to confuse that offensive line. And Tyrod Taylor, as athletic as he is, had nowhere to go to try to create. Bowden with Arenas back. Too far. Talk about hang time. But it'll come out on the 20 yard line. We'll take a break. Just underway here in the second quarter. Bama leading Virginia Tech by two. Ingram back in as the Alabama tailback here on first and 10. 14 03. They've been coming out from the 20 yard line. Take a look at the Pacific Life game summary, and as you can see, the defense has simply dominated this game. The difference, if you will, was the fumbled punt return by Virginia Tech that led to the third Crimson Tide field goal, and Tech's only score that 98 yard kickoff return by Roberts. So here we go now, second down. Gets away from Ingram and he just dives on the ball at the 15 and it's going to be third and long. That's the one thing you have to worry about when you put in some plays that you haven't run in the past. And this is going to work out for, for Alabama's offense. But you've got a running back back there taking a direct snap. You got your left guard Mike Johnson pulling around and you get a bad snap by the center that time Vlahos. And now you're in third and long. Vlahos has snapped a couple of them low that have been fielded. But that time, Ingram could not come up with it. McElroy, though, has been able to reach down and grab a couple. Now he takes a direct snap that's on the money. Buying time and out of bounds on the Alabama sideline. Virginia Tech doing a good job of taking Julio Jones out of this football game, especially on third down, and forcing McElroy to look for somebody else to be able to convert. And that, that, right now, that's working out very well for them as they forced Alabama into six third downs, and they're only one of six. Now, Virginia Tech changes return men. They'll go to Hosley, and he is a freshman from Delray Beach, Florida. He's down on the East Coast. Down south, not too far from West Palm Beach. And they'll try his hands. Fitzgerald hangs it. Fields it at the 31 yard line. Looks for a corner. Now back to the middle. A beautiful return by the young man to the 42. We'll see more of him. Fitzgerald, the punter, makes the stop on the freshman. We'll take a break. 
Can the Virginia Tech offense move against this Bama defense? This kickoff game become extremely popular in the two years they've had it here. Now Tyrod off a play fake shakes a defender. Going to go deep down the sideline. He had a man in the middle of the field that he could have come back to, though, and instead he tried to pick up Roberts, the burner. This Alabama defense, I think, when the dust settles in December and we look back, I think we're going to be looking in the opening weekend at one of the top two or three defenses in defenses in all of college football. Remember last year they were a top five type of defense. Remember how they finished the year? Tim Tebow in Florida beat them, put a lot of points up in the SEC title. Utah embarrassed them, and the coaches have been using that as motivation. Hey, guys, you're a great defense, but the last two games, we're 0-2, and you've given up 62 points. That's 31 a game. Second down and 10. And cutting back to the other side is Ryan Williams back on the field. Josh Chapman puts that helmet back on. I look at the size of Frank Beamer and the uh, Virginia Tech coaches. They said when they broke down the Alabama team, they just could not believe how big they were on defense. And when you look down there at the fellows in white, you know what kind of size you're up against. Dedrick now comes off the field. Third down. Going deep again. Watch Roberts and uh, overthrown, and he was not open either because Kareem Jackson, the corner twice, has had him blanketed down there. This time on third down, they they call this moving the launching point, moving the quarterback's position. Sometimes he's directly behind the center. This time, rolling him out away from the pressure. The problem is the Virginia Tech wide receivers aren't getting any separation from the Alabama corners. Nobody is open right now for Tyrod Taylor, and all he could do is throw it away. And the thing that we must point out about this Bama defense, they are not allowing Tyrod to hurt them at all with his feet. He has not been able to take off and haul it downfield against this defense. Fair catch made at the 12 yard line by Arenas. Well, as you know, Crimson Tide fans, they've won 12, 12 national championships. There was a huge one. And who made the tackle against Penn State on that goal line stand in the 1979 Sugar Bowl? You know the answer. I do. Oh, I know you do. That one, that one's a home run. You've seen the picture of Mike Gooman. You've seen the Crimson Tide defense. The Bear. I that thought was it was a great. was it a group of guys or was it one guy? Well, we're gonna we're gonna you no, know, it was a group. Okay. There were some other. I think that a famous. Think painting? about the Leroy Neiman painting, and think about the guy coming up high. Okay. <laughs> First down and ten. McElroy in the tie. Whistle. There are there are a few. Uh... Before the snap, false start, 78 offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Well, let's give it, let's give it up right away. Perry, here we are. Who made that tackle on Mike Gooman on fourth down and inches? Very Joe Paterno cross. called them. The plunge right straight ahead. Very there he is, very yeah. cross, yeah. One of the great defensive players. I'll get you next week. Okay. It doesn't matter what direction <laughs> you go next week. Roy Upchurch is the back. From the end zone. Far sideline almost intercepted. They had Jones bracket at that time. Morgan, the rover, coming up. We have Morgan following him, trailing him. They, they realize, hey, they're going to throw in a curl or an outcut. If it comes underneath, Morgan has to make the play, and he uses his size that time to go up and make a play to keep it away from Julio Jones. And you can see the corner Virgil in the back behind Julio. This is what they're doing the whole game on third down, and, and obvious passing downs to just take him away and see if McElroy can find again somebody else. Second down and 15. McElroy just takes off. 
out to the 14 yard line. They need to get to the 23 for a first down and Jake Johnson. An impressive sophomore. From Fredericksburg Virginia. Been, he's been very active here tonight. Jake Johnson and Barquell Rivers. Both making their first. Starts uh, well Rivers actually started in the Orange Bowl but first time they've had to take over. Be the man in the middle for Bud Foster in this defense and as you said both holding up very well. McElroy has missed his last seven. Hit on the release jump ball intercepted by Virginia Tech. They are inside the 15 yard line hit on the release and Hopkins gets the ball. Hopkins makes it but it was worlds and he is all world off that defensive end spot. He's a playmaker. This is the risk when you go empty without a tight end. You're putting your offensive lineman out on an island and Drew Davis over here has to be able to pick up a very fierce pass rusher and Jason Worlds. Watch the burst and the speed as he goes right by Davis and closes in on McElroy. It's what Virginia Tech and Bud Foster needed. Now a quick snap. They pound up the middle with Williams. Ball is at the 11 yard line. So they pick up almost four yards on that. It's a Virginia Tech offense, Brent. It struggled mightily in the red zone with very predictable play calling when Tyrod Taylor was in. I think it was 111 snaps and 101 runs. Let's see if they can learn from that and play better in this area. Keeping it on the ground with Williams, and he crosses the 10 to about the 9. Washington makes the play defensively. There's the stat, and I think they scored touchdown 63% of the time last year. Is 108th in the nation, one of the worst. True freshman has checked in, David Wilson, who has electrifying speed off to the left to Tyrod Taylor. So there's the young man right next to the quarterback. Third down and five. Taylor dancing and brought down right well short of the first down. So the field goal unit will come on. Right now, it, it really, it's a no contest. Alabama's defensive line and linebackers against the Virginia Tech offensive line, especially when they get up to third down. And I would say that it's no contest the other way either. Yeah, yeah. McElroy has missed his last eight passes against the Virginia Tech defense. Now here comes Waldron, his first career field goal attempt. Remember, he transferred from Penn State. He's hit an extra point. This is a 28 yarder. Big moment for the youngster right down the middle. Virginia Tech regains the lead. Seesawing in Atlanta. You're watching Saturday Night Football on ABC. When you look at the scoreboard, keep in mind that the kicking game is responsible for all 19 points that we have here tonight. And now another kickoff. This one, of course, by Virginia Tech after their successful field goal. There you can see Arenas back deep with Grant. Number 29. They kicked it to Grant last time. This time they're going to let Arenas bring it back. Stopped at the 23 yard line. There was another reason why we ask you that trivia question about who made that tackle of Mike Gooman because there is Barry Krauss and he is a member of the Alabama radio team. He works the sideline. Fellow looks like he can still play say. a little bit now. Put it, put Look it at that. There. There, there's the photograph. The Gooman coming up over the top and 77 is big Barry Krauss. Marty Lyons was also a member of that uh, Bear Bryant football team. One of 12. National championships won by Alabama. 
Eight and a half now for McElroy, who's back in the pistol, and they'll take a look at that. Off the play action, the jump pass is incomplete. I think by your count, that's nine straight incompletions here. And uh, you know, it, it's it's very easy to be up here or to watch on TV and think, boy, why just just make an easy throw? But I think right now he's in a bit of a of a, of a fog here because his favorite target is is not there, and he's having a hard time coming off of Julio Jones and finding that second option or third option. Back of the gun, Ingram alongside. Fires in underneath and just short of a first down, Marquis Mays. Well, if you can get the ball into Mays' hands a few times, that bracket might loosen up a little bit for Jones. His tremendous quickness. And I, I think it's just a matter of settling and, and just getting confident in the players around him. Colin Peake can make plays. Hanks, remember the catch he made behind man coverage Here earlier in the game? They've got some people that can make some plays. Here comes the Wildcat again on third down and one. <clears throat> For the first down. Battering right straight ahead. So even though Saban was the head coach of the Miami Dolphins and is no longer there. His staff did take notes from the Dolphins coaching staff on what they did with Ronnie Brown in that formation last year in the National Football League. And uh, we are seeing more and more of that formation. Arkansas certainly had a hand in its development when McFarlane was running for coach not there before he moved along to Mississippi and McFarlane went to the National Football League. Got the handoff to Ingram and Ingram has a little daylight. Outstanding run. Breaks a couple of tackles and crosses midfield. Best run of the night. 14 yards for Ingram. But Jake Johnson, the outside linebacker, is going to come to the inside, making it easy for 75 Barrett Jones to collapse down on him. And what great vision by Mark Ingram bounces to the outside. And I think that's the difference this year with Ingram. He's not settling just for an eight yard gain. I think he has more bursts this year, and he's trying to get bigger yards. Draw play with him, and the right side was open, but it closed quickly that time. And Virgil. Moved up hard. Stefan Virgil moving from the field corner now closer to the boundary. Boundary corner is just a, the corner to the near side for the Virginia Tech defense. And the last four corners to play near the boundary, all four have been all Americans. So Virgil with some big shoes to fill. Last year was Macho Harris. Up church into the backfield. Roy runs into the teeth of Mr. World. That's who brought the pressure. Rivers is also in there helping Worlds. They crossed the two middle linebackers on a blitz. Johnson and Rivers. You can see the confusion for Upchurch and pass protection. And both these defensive coordinators. And they've had eight months to get ready to face these offenses. And they are living up to the billing, Brent. They are dominating and being very creative on how they're getting after these opposing offensive lines. Here's third and 12. Beautiful catch along the sideline that time. McElroy under pressure puts it in Jones's hands. And the chains will move on the 16 yard gain. I think this time McElroy said, I know he's double covered, and I don't care. I'm still going to throw it. Puts it to the outside where only his man can make the play here. Watch him fight through this. Gets to the outside. Ball's perfectly thrown, especially considering what McElroy had and Jake Johnson closing in. He gets the foot down, and that is a great catch by Julio Jones. Ingram is back in, and uh, clock is stopped. Is under further review. So they want to make sure. It looked like he put his toe down. Of course, in the college game, you're well aware just one foot has to be down, and it, it looked like in our one replay, but it remember every play is reviewed. They want just a little bit more time 
Make sure he had possession when that foot came down. Grabs it. And there was the left foot. It certainly looked all of the world to us like it was a completion. The most impressive thing to me, considering the night that Greg McElroy has had, is for him to stay in there and show some courage. You, he's been hit almost every time he's thrown the football. And to make an accurate throw when he's got a defensive lineman and John Graves coming down on him, that is something that can help him get his confidence going to be able to make some better throws. This feels like the atmosphere of a good bowl game. The field is confirmed. First down. Passionate fans, sellout crowd here at the Chick fil A kickoff game. Two outstanding coaching staffs trading blows here. Lining him up in a Wildcat again with McElroy stepping to the outside. Play fake. Ingram and we can see here tonight that that formation figures to be a big part of the Alabama offense this year with John Graves fine defensive lineman from Virginia Tech making that stop. You just got to wonder if the big the big fella the sophomore Mark Ingram has a little pass in there somewhere in the repertoire every time he's I think one time maybe he's handed it off to Julio Jones but it's almost like they're becoming so obvious that they're setting up those Virginia Tech safeties to eventually maybe take a shot. And get it thrown behind a safety cheating up. Second and nine. That boy, what a great grab by Jones. A major league catch and a first down for the tie. I love to see wide receivers use their hands to catch the football. And this is exactly what you want to do in traffic. Use his hands and gets the football in before Rivers, the linebacker, can come in to be able to dislodge that football. Great concentration and a good job of protecting the ball and catching the football with his hands. There's some defensive coordinators in the SEC already wondering what to do as Ingram moves back up in that wildcat formation. Another low snap. This time picks it back up and makes the most of it, banging into the red zone to the 19 yard line. It looks like at least for the moment that Virginia Tech's defense is just a touch winded. Alabama getting on them pretty good here on this drive opening up some holes. I kind of sense the same thing and I think co converting a couple passes to Julio Jones has maybe opened some things up to allow them to push Virginia Tech around a little bit easier in the trenches too when they run the football. This is the 11th play of this drive. Hand off. Touchdown up church. A fresh set of wheels takes it 19 yards. Our first offensive touchdown of this football game. An impressive drive by the tide. Different attacks on another part. So Alabama regains the lead. On the up church touchdown. Tough run. On the street. We are back. Alabama has regained the lead 16 10 on Virginia Tech. Brent, you always hear zone blocking, and this is a great illustration from Alabama about zone blocking. Mike Johnson with a great block. Vlahos will push Jake Johnson, and then the vision here by Upchurch to make the read and then get upfield. And by the way, he could have gone to the corner, but no, no. He wanted a piece of Dorian Porch, the safety. Could have gone to the corner, but lowers the shoulder and goes right through him into the end zone. Here comes Roberts again. 
This time he is wrestled out of bounds and a penalty flag comes down. Personal foul, horse collar tackle on the kicking team. 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. Well, let's check in with uh, Big John Saunders and his new partner, Jesse Palmer. A lot of things going on today, John. Thank you, John. It is first and 10 for a struggling Virginia Tech offense. And that was the way he went to Boone, his tight end, and Hightower, the linebacker, had defended him. Give you an idea on a kickoff return, if you just joined us, for 98 yards. That was the Virginia Tech touchdown. Overall, their offense has accounted for only 37 yards here tonight from scrimmage. So this Alabama defense has really dominated the Virginia Tech offense. Tyrod throws it underneath, and uh, his receiver was going down. Boyce was the intended target that time, and suddenly it is third and ten again. Hey, he ran right into the umpire trying to get across the middle of the field and went down. Brent, you talked earlier about the size of the Alabama defense. I think it's it's kind of symbolic when you look at the linebackers. Just for people at home, their two inside linebackers are close to 260 pounds. Both 6'4", and both can fly and have a nose for the football. Trying to get heat on Tyrod, and they did, forcing a quick throw, and there was Johnson. And a penalty flag does come flying on this one. Looks like they're going to get Marquise Johnson coming over the back there. Pass interference, defense number 24. This is going to be close. The spot of the foul, automatic first down. It's one of those when you slow it down in super, super slow-mo, you can see him come and come through his back before the ball gets there. Oh, he, he was all hand checking him. Yeah, he's hand checking him yeah. there. That's your sport in the winter there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and Stevie Lavin breaking it there. <laughs> got him on the sideline, got him wide open. Inside the five, Ryan Williams, the running back for 43 yards, slips out. Busted coverage by Bama. And McClain not happy about this busted coverage by Johnson. Well, Marquise Johnson has the interference, and then he gets lost. You're going to see him sneak out on a wheel route right down the sidelines. Watch the defensive back right here. Confusion. He doesn't know if, whether he should go to the middle of the field or stay to the outside. Johnson back-to-back -back plays, and Nick Saban's getting him out of the football game. Remember now, Virginia Tech, and you can see the coaching staff coaching up the young man. You hate to pile on, but Marquise Johnson is the, the young man who struggled last year late in the year for this Alabama defense against Utah and against Florida when they gave up some passing yards. Well, MetLife is providing today's aerial coverage, and visit MetLife.com to learn more about MetLife's long history of providing coverage at major sporting events. MetLife guarantees for the if in life. Two and a half minutes to go. A first and goal for Virginia Tech. We all know about the struggling problems that Taylor has had in the red zone. Talked about it earlier. The one thing they're going to want to try to do is to get the young man out in space. Alabama has different ideas. Option bad pitch. He's got to go back. Picks it up and goes down at the 19. Breathing room for the Bama defense. And there's a penalty flag. Hang on. There's a penalty flag at the one yard line. And, and another, now one. another one goes down. And McLean is back there. 
Brent Rolando McLean and Sergio Render, the left guard, number 70. As you said, back at the end of the play, way behind, away from the football. Going back and forth. And the second flag came down later. Let's remember that. Following the play, we have two fouls. Dead ball, personal foul, 25, defense. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct, 25, defense. Both fouls will be enforced half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. The play, 97, Washington actually gets a hand on the ball there, Brent. Not just closes down, but gets a hand on the ball. Taylor fortunate to recover it. But Rolando McLean, the leader, the heart and soul of the Alabama defense, makes two mental errors and loses his composure. Inside the five yard line. And another first and goal coming up with Ryan Williams, the tailback. The handoff to Williams. Williams middle, battling toward the goal line, down just short of it. It'll be second down and goal. They run this straight ISO with Williams. They got a push there by the Virginia Tech offensive line. Pretty good surge. You have to be able to get to the second level, up to the linebackers, McLean and Hightower. Otherwise, they'll make every play. That time, the guards were able to get up to that second level to give Williams a little bit of room to work. Taylor keeps it himself and is met. And uh, somewhat ironic that we talked about Alabama's great goal line stand against Penn State way back in the day. And now under Nick Saban, they're trying to put forth a more modern day goal line stand. Third and goal coming up. Remember, Virginia Tech burned a lot of timeouts early with some confusion. So really, they don't have any time to sit around and think about what might be the best play. Third and goal. Here is Williams. End zone touchdown. Pass interference on a third down. Broken coverage. And Rolando McClain, two middle errors on one play after a big loss by Virginia Tech on that option play. Virginia Tech scored, but given an assist to the Alabama defense. Waldron tacks on the extra point. A minute to go, and it's Virginia Tech. Let's go back to that play that turned this drive completely around. Beautiful defensive effort. Forced Virginia Tech back to the 19, but now the penalty. Upper left, upper left. It's going to be right up in this area, right there. Oh, yeah, you can't do that. Plays over. Well, then there's another one coming here. I think he must there's say something. One. Don't you think he says something to the official? Yeah, yeah well, he won't stop. He, yeah, he won't stop. He continues to be aggressive. Now he's pushing an official. He's lucky that he's still on the field after that. He sure is. Can't touch the officials. This isn't practice. With an assistant coach trying to hold you back. And then Williams dives for the touchdown. But think about that, Brent. The the mental errors there where McLean just loses his cool. The pass interference, the broken coverage. Then, there was a Saban back with McLean saying you just cannot afford to lose your composure in a situation like that. All right, here we go now. A minute left. In a game that has gone back and forth and back and forth. 
Virginia Tech of the ACC very important for the conference. Alabama of course won the SEC West a year ago and then lost to Florida in the championship game and then came up real flat as in really flat against Utah in the Sugar Bowl. Fielded at the goal line by Arenas again. And Arenas has stopped around the 21 yard line. 56 seconds and uh, well there's a reminder. That on Thursday September 24th the whole world will black out at exactly the same time. Everyone will see a flash of their own future. And mankind will take on the greatest mystery it's ever faced. ABC's new series flash forward will premiere at eight seven central on ABC. You got me intrigued now. What was that date? <laughs> <laughs> One point game. Greg McElroy. He's five of 15 for 84 yards. Upchurch is the running back. Last time he touched it, he reeled off a touchdown. And he's battling for another one. Midfield. And he's just hunting down defensive players. Banged one into the end zone, and this time he crushes another one. Cody Grimm, I don't think Cody Grimm, thankfully, is getting up, but boy, Upchurch is trying to show his coaches. I, I want the rock. I want to carry the football. He cuts back. He's not even trying to get around Grimm. He's he's looking for Grimm. And Grimm is now checking out of the game. How about the power here by Roy Upchurch? The touchdown, he looked up Dorian Porch, one of the hardest hitting safeties on this team. And now it looked like Alabama was maybe trying to kill the clock. They pick up a big game, and now they're thinking field goal with one timeout left. 36 yards with Grimm on the sideline. And the throw in underneath to the tight end peak. That's the first time tonight that he's gone to the tight end. And they've got 35 seconds, and they got a great leg in Tiffin. They've got timeouts. They can regain the lead yet again. Looks like they're going to cut maybe a measurement here. The timeout signal, a point of issue here from uh, the Alabama sideline, and uh, Nick is asking for an explanation as the measurement is made. See that? And they have the first down, 35 seconds. So certainly they are moving toward a Tiffin attempt here. I don't think there's any question about that with Ingram. Checking back into the backfield. He's kicked a 49er, 34, and a 32. Still has a timeout left. This is Ingram. Now, this time it's contagious. Upchurch lit a fire with these running backs. The offensive line just pushing Virginia Tech around here these last couple drives. Drew Davis, number 79, leading the way that time for the offensive line. McElroy guns it incomplete. That was peak, the intended target that time. 13 seconds, second down and 10. One timeout left for Bama. The most obvious thing, if they still are going to throw the football for a quarterback making his first career start, is you, see, you can't take a sack. And, and Virginia Tech's put a lot of pressure on him. But right now, all of a sudden, Greg McElroy seems to be in a little bit of a groove and playing with some confidence as he's starting to spread the football around. Start to bring it in underneath. I think got his tight end involved, and uh, you see some. Here comes the pressure, throwing against it for the end zone, incomplete. Jones the target. Carmichael was back deep. 
And Tiffin will trot out. Six yard attempt. He pulls that one. No good. From the right hash, Tiffin misses. Tell you what, Virginia Tech has caught about every break they could here in this first half to remain in this football game. They just miss hit it. But the Hokies took advantage. Oh sure. Of the yeah. opportunities. Yeah, they had opportunities but a lot of them. Were, you know, they had the big kickoff return was a great play the big sack that they had deep in Alabama territory huge play. But they're going to be very happy to be down by one heading into halftime here or up one rather. Yeah remember now Virginia Tech took the lead when Williams banged in on that ISO after the two penalties against McLean. Let's quickly go to Lisa. Thanks Frank. Nick mental errors really hurt you guys in that Virginia Tech touchdown drive. What happened. Well I don't know what happened but we lost our poise in the last drive and got three penalties and gave up a big play on a busted coverage. And obviously special teams have contributed to 10 points for them in the game and a lot of good field positions. So we need to do a better job in special teams. We got to keep our poise and make some plays and just keep playing. I mean we knew this was going to be a tough game and we're ready for it in the second half. Now for most of that half the offense and Greg McElroy appeared to struggle but it seemed late that he kind of opened it up a little bit. What's changed for him. Well, He's a young guy. I think he's gaining some confidence. I think he made some plays and I think you know we're, we're going to keep keep on doing what we're doing and I think we've got a good plan and hopefully we'll keep pushing on them and wear them out a little bit. All right. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Brent. Thanks Lisa. One point game 17 16 Virginia Tech leads it. So let's send it to Times Square now. Here's John Saunders and Jesse Palmer for the Bud Light Halftime Report. John. Arenas you saw him back deep. Into the end zone and Grant will bring it out. 15. Strong return to the 29 yard line. As we take a look at the Pacific Life game summary, and you would imagine it is the defense is dominating, as Herbie told you. But look at the return yards for Virginia Tech 183, and of course, that includes the 98 yard kickoff return for a touchdown. The return yards and the, the big sack by Virginia Tech's Jason Worlds deep in Alabama territory also. Helping the Hokies stay in this game and in fact have the lead. Greg McElroy back in the gun on first down. On the release is able to complete it to Ingram who keeps going for a first down. Let's check in with Lisa. Well, Brendan, injury update to tell you about for Virginia Tech. Tight end Greg Boone is out for the rest of this game. Not sure exactly what happened to him, but they're saying it's a right shoulder injury. He was in the x-ray room during halftime. Also, I got a chance to speak to Frank Beamer about how to get Tyrod Taylor going. He said we've got to protect for him better. Also, we got to get some crossing routes going. We need to hit some people on the run. Yeah, and Lisa, let me correct myself. Uh, he just reached almost to the 35, so they've still got five yards to go here on second down. And now that brings up third down for him. Third down pressure by Virginia Tech has been outstanding and they've mixed up their looks. They have brought some pressure at times and others have sat back and tried to force McElroy into making a poor decision and McElroy it's been some easy reads. It's either one receiver or hit the check down or take off running. You got to believe first of all where is number eight Julio Jones is the first thing that Virginia Tech is asking themselves. Lined up there. Just to the left of the tackle. McElroy. Looks back to the middle and guns it for the first down. Hanks, the receiver. One of the things I would do if I'm Alabama, we talk about adjustments at halftime and trying to build the continuity and, and rhythm as an offense when there's been some struggles. 
And there's Jim McElwain to the far left there with the glasses as the offensive coordinator. Is, guys, clearly they're going to try to take Julio Jones away. Let's find ways to get Ingram and Terry Grant and other players involved. They can make plays. Let's get them the football. On first down, Ingram. And he is stopped by Morgan. Number two. Bringing the heat that time. Great pressure and great speed. And the thing about going through two a days and prepping and getting you get tired of looking at the same thing over and over. You get out into a game, the game starts to move fast. Well, in the second half, you start to settle in and just make your reads, read your keys, and, and attack. And that's time. That's exactly what Damon Morgan did. Jones is on the Carmichael side, and now the safety moves over. McElroy rolls to the right, and he'll step out of bounds. It looks like Foster, Herbie, is making a late adjustment in that secondary, depending on where Jones goes. And that time it was a late roll of a safety to disguise whatever coverage they were in. And of course, against a young quarterback, Bud Foster has been lethal against first time starters throughout his career as a defensive coordinator. Now he's got McElroy in a third and seven. Offensive line gives him time, guns it for the first down, and a big hit delivered by Rivers. But it's still a first down for Bama. The defense shifting towards Julio Jones, and it, we're going to keep we're going to keep talking about this because it's a big factor. You got to find somebody else able to make a play, and McElroy has to be willing to come off of number eight to find some others that can make plays. And Colin Peak, I'm telling you, as this year goes on, is going to become a primary target for Greg McElroy. He's got two here for 18 yards, one late in the first half, and one now with Upchurch back in. And the end around and stood up beautifully by Virgil. Virgil read the end around with Mays perfectly. What a block, a crack block by the wide receiver Mike McCoy coming from the left. Watch it right here. He's going to come in and make a big play. And it, actually, the block is, it, I mean, he just laid him out. We didn't get, he didn't get very many yards, but the block, and McCoy, of course, is going to let the defensive back. Virgil know all about it, but a good job by the rest of the Hokies closing in for no game. Second and 11. Deflected, incomplete. The quickness of Virginia Tech's front four. Allowing them to get right through the Alabama offensive line. Remember James Carpenter, first-time starter. Lejos, the center, first-time starter. And Barrett Jones, the right guard, first-time starter. Wonder about the continuity. You wonder about the confidence as this game continues on and facing, again, a very aggressive and athletic Virginia Tech front. Third and 11, the backers back away. They try to get a four-man rush in on McElroy. Rolls out to the right now. Can't find an open receiver. Hopkins and Friday get to the football. Friday does a good job of getting around the right tackle, Drew Davis, forcing McElroy to step up. And once McElroy steps up, there's just nobody downfield that he's able to locate, giving Virginia Tech plenty of time to corral him and then force the punt. Hosley, the freshman, back deep again. Remember the veteran Williams? Well, I shouldn't say he's a veteran either, but uh, Hosley made a clean grab, and this one headed for the end zone. What a punch! What a punch! Again, Brian Selman, the center, gets down on P.J. Fitzgerald's punt, which backed up. At the goal line, and Virginia Tech will be starting from their own four. Timeout.
Well, Tyrod Taylor and Virginia Tech lead it by the slimmest of margins with 10 08 to go in the third quarter here in the Chick fil A kickoff game from Atlanta, Georgia. But they are coming out against this fierce tide defense from the shadow of their own end zone, and you better believe that Alabama will be attacking Taylor. Lisa had mentioned talking with Frank Beamer and the importance of crossing routes. One of the reasons that's so important is when you face man coverage, it's an easy throw, and usually your receivers have a pretty good chance of getting separation from the defensive backs in man coverage. But in the first half, you didn't see that happen very often. Let's see if they can get it going here in the second half. the formation they used when they banged in for their second touchdown handing it off to Williams and running straight ahead and uh, we have had a huge upset in college football tonight let's go to Matt Weiner in New York Matt yep uh, congratulations to Bronco Mendenhall the head coach there at BYU and Max Hall the quarterback that is a major upset second and seven for the Hokies Tyrod handing off again to Williams. There's a penalty flag and a couple of them fly. You don't see that very often. It's holding or offensive face masks. He one of the linemen took Dante Hightower's helmet, just pulled it off of his head. Blake to Christopher, the right tackle. <laughs> Hightower and McLean are having such big nights. Grab anything you can to try to keep them away from getting to the ball carrier. There are two fouls on the play. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face on the offense. That penalty is declined. Holding number 62 of the offense. That penalty is accepted. Half the distance to the goal from the previous spot. Still second down. So with his right hand, he got a hold of the face mask for a personal foul. And his left hand, he's going to hold. Right there, he rips the helmet off. And with his left hand, that's the penalty Nick Saban wants is the left hand. <laughs> <laughs> the right hand, we could take that. Or we'll just we'll, we'll decline that. We'll, we want that left hand with the hole. Meanwhile, Dante Hightower says, a "Helmet? Who needs a helmet?" The Hokies run it right straight ahead. Just line up Williams and try to bust it out. Try to give themselves a little daylight. Whatever breathing room they can manage before they have to punt. The dreaded third down against the Alabama defense. Very surprised we've not seen Tyrod Taylor against this man coverage look for chances to run. He's scrambling to throw, but not looking to run at all tonight. On the slant, drop incomplete. Hokies forced a punt. And Arenas figures to give them excellent field position. Remember, we talked a lot about Beamer Ball through the years of Virginia Tech last year. They've got Bowden punting out of his own end zone. It's a hokey bounce and a second one before it rolls dead under the circumstances. Well done. It's inside the 35 yard line. That's where Alabama will have it after that 57 yard punt. You're watching Saturday Night Football on ABC. Here in Atlanta, 
we've got the Chick-fil-A kickoff game and of course NASCAR rolls into the Atlanta Speedway with the 500 miler tomorrow night. Only two races left. Denny Hamlin standing in fourth place and uh, yesterday folks he took Lisa Salters on a ride of her life. Let's go down to Lisa. That's with right. Denny. Brent, that's right. Brent. I'm with Denny Hamlin and that's for what you did to me yesterday driving me so close to that wall. But tell me how long have you been a Virginia Tech fan. Uh, I've been a fan of theirs for a long time but once I met uh, Frank Beamer for the first time uh, I was definitely hooked. He's just got such great character and uh, you know when the tragedies happen I was the first kind of you know me and a couple other Virginia drivers to kind of get together and help with the uh, memorial fund so uh, just a big fan. Now I asked you your thoughts about what's going on so far tonight with the team and you had some good analysis. How are you breaking it down. Got to stop their run. Uh, our offense has got to get going. That's for one thing. It looked like uh, they're getting a lot of pressure early uh, on our quarterback. But for the most part, defense, best teams doing a pretty good job, but we got to stop their run. All right, stick with me. I got to send it back up to Brent for a minute. Brent? All right, Lisa, that was Jones on that Virginia Tech side over there. So here comes now the third down for Alabama. All the talk about Julio Jones. It's a good time to try to again look for the inside receiver to the other side. Hanks 15. If he gets one on one coverage. Here comes the pressure. They hit him on the release down the middle. Incomplete. There's a penalty flag thrown at midfield. There is a penalty flag away from the intended receiver. So while they're sorting it out, let's go back to Lisa and Denny Hamlin. Lisa. Thanks, Brent. Denny, I know that you spoke to the Virginia Tech team at practice a couple of weeks ago. How does car racing translate? What were you able to say to the guys? Well, it's just, you know, racing is a lot like football. I mean, it's a team sport. You know, it, it, it doesn't, it's just not always about one person. Uh, it's a team that kind of makes the deal happen. And, uh, you know, you just, you got to help your teammates up. You know, if someone makes a mistake, don't chastise them about it, but uh, help them get back up, and that's what uh, great teamwork is. All right, well, we appreciate you taking the time. We know you're fourth in the standings right now, so good luck in the rest of the, as you head down the stretch. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And let me give you another one. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a penalty, and we want to show it. The crowd was away from the ball as he tried to cut to the inside. Huge play. Third ball yeah. there, Brent. I'd say. Puts him up around midfield, gives him a first set of downs. Here's up Church, and this time he's thrown for a loss. Virginia so Tech coaches. Rivers. Let's go back one more time. Who initiated this contact is my question. Well, he was trying to cut to the inside, and Chancellor took away his ability to get to the inside. What the Virginia Tech coaches are yelling is the ball isn't catchable and that there shouldn't be a flag. He clearly got in the way of Julio Jones. That's gutsy by Virginia Tech. An all-out blitz and leaving Chancellor at 6'4", 230, man-to-man -man against Julio Jones. Second down and 12. And oh. keeping it at that direct snap, they have used the Wildcat on a number of occasions here tonight. That was Upchurch taking it that time, and Jake Johnson making the stop. So we'll bring up now a third down and almost 10. See what Bud Foster dials up defensively this time. Jones goes out to the right of the formation. Again, a four man rush. They'll bracket Jones. McElroy forced to look down the middle for another first down pass and that time it was Hanks. There's McElroy growing up right in front of our eyes here wants to go to Julio Jones to the outside the safety porch takes him away comes back buys a little bit of time with his feet and then finds Hanks who works back to the middle towards his quarterback to give him an open target. He's proud of himself there and he should be big third down conversion. At the Hokey 37 here. 529 left in quarter number three. One point game. <laughs> Whistle. Left guard Mike Johnson may have moved a little bit early. Prior to the snap, false start. 75 offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Barrett Jones. 
is 75. The way these defenses are playing, mental mistakes are costly. Cannot afford to give these defenses any momentum or any yards. It's hard enough to execute. Here comes the pressure. Up church. Breaks free. Gets to the second level. Fumble knocked free. Recovered by the Hokies. Virgil, number 22, recovers the loose ball. Up church had broken free to the next level. They were able to knock it free from the rear, and Virgil recovered it. What a great effort here by Cody Graham. He gets a little payback this time on Upchurch. Remember earlier in the game, Upchurch ran right over top of him and sent him out of the game. This time, what great effort by Graham to chase him from behind right here and knock that football loose after a huge run once again by Roy Upchurch. Tyrod Taylor and the offense will take over on the 11-yard line. On first down, looking deep, now dances away. First down, and finally with his feet, Tyrod Taylor dances and dashes for a hokey first down. I mean, talking about this all game, Taylor has to be willing to make some plays with his feet. We know he wants to show that he can throw this year, but when a defense is playing man-to-man -man coverage, if you can make the first guy miss, there's nobody left to defend the quarterback, and that's what he needs to do to keep this defense honest. Ed Wang did a fabulous job that time. Anders was a contained man, and Wang blew him out of there and opened that hole up. A terrific job by a veteran left tackle as Oglesby comes back. And Alabama tried to contain Tyrod Taylor, and Wang on that big play just blew the contained man out of there. Chinese American left tackle has a brother on the team, and his brother, because of an injury, will be redshirted this year as a freshman. Meanwhile, you can see over the sideline Upchurch being tended to on a hamstring. Second down, inside handoff. And a first down by Josh Oglesby. Darren Evans out for the year. Ryan Williams, Josh Oglesby, and a true freshman David Wilson have to be able to pick up the slack. I think a lot of people were anxious to see how these three would be able to do replacing Darren Evans. They all bring something a little bit different. Of the three, Oglesby is a little bit more powerful when he gets his hands on the football. There's Ryan Williams, who's played quite a bit and had a touchdown tonight for the Hokies. It's a great handoff to him again. And we check in for an update with New York. Second and 11 for the Hokies. And look inside the Williams and Red beautifully by Hightower. Well, there's the closing speed by Dante Hightower. And again, let's not forget the size of this young man. A great job of reading the play instantly. Watch him close in on this right away. By the time Williams gets his hands on the ball, nowhere to go as the sophomore at 6'4, 260 pounds, closes in. Boy, he moves quick. Third and 12. Comes a blitz. Throws short against it. Complete. But short of the first down. Boykin, the receiver, number 81. Trying to hit those crossing routes that Frank Beamer talked about. But not only do you have to deal with the defensive backs, but the defensive line is so well schooled that they're turning back and chasing as well. Here comes Arenas. Bowden versus Arenas again. Bowden is a very good job. Hangs this one beautiful. Fair catch. Down about 11 yard line. Long way for the Crimson Tide. They trail Virginia Tech 1760 here in the third. 
Well, there's the most sought after trophy in college football, the Coach's Trophy, presented by Dr. Pepper. It'll be awarded the 2010 City BCS National Championship game, January 7th, right here on ABC. McElroy handing it off and busting free is Ingram. Now to the 29 yard line. Start to get closer and closer to this fourth quarter. You wonder about the size of Alabama up front on the offensive line. In the back, Mark Ingram, who's a powerful runner, if they can eventually start to wear down the undersized, albeit athletic, Virginia Tech defense. That's hard running that time by Ingram for a big game. 18 yards. They run that draw. Nothing doing this time. Just to follow up what Kirk has pointed out. Time of possession for Alabama 26 and a half minutes to 17 and a half minutes. Now there is Bud Foster. And let me point out again what he's done against quarterbacks who've had two or fewer previous career starts since 2004. Only four touchdowns. They have only completed 47 percent against him. And he's forced seven fumbles 20 sacks and eight interceptions. Those are impressive numbers and tonight McElroy is trying to beat that on. Drops off the screen to Ingram on the right side. Close to another first down before Johnson makes a stop. Good call on second long, drawing the defensive line towards McElroy. And another simple throw for him to just get it out to the back, setting up this third down. You know, it seems like every every year, college football, no matter what Virginia head Tech has coming back, you know one thing for sure. Their defense with Bud Foster is going to play some football. Pretty Every amazing, year. isn't it? Oh. Well, this presentation of Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines, will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Saturday night, a scoreless third quarter. And we start the final 15 minutes. Alabama with the football, trailing it by a point. McElroy up under center. Pokey show pressure. Play action, get a throw. Middle dropped at the 40 yard line. Boy, gutsy call. Deep in your own, or not deep, but in your own territory in the fourth quarter, down by a point, third and one. They decided to try to catch Virginia Tech off balance. They actually had the play. He's a little bit late on the throw, causing him to put a little bit more zip on the ball. Right there, the ball should be delivered. He waits a little bit, and then it gets into heavy traffic. Still, Julio Jones, knowing him, should have been able to make that catch. The punting duel between Bowden and Fitzgerald continues. Freshman back deep. Their catch is signal for. Boy, did they give him enough room? No flag. That was close. Back at the 18. Well, there's a whole lot of NASCAR fans here tonight rooting for either Alabama or Virginia Tech. Both schools are located in NASCAR hotbeds, and tomorrow night at 7 p.m., they'll be on the track over there, some of the motor homes with all the flags they'll be watching. Two races remain for the likes of Kyle Busch and Mark Martin to get off the bubble and into the chase. So the 500 miler down in Hampton, Georgia, just south of Atlanta to Mahon. That'll be exciting to get in and get started at 7 o'clock Eastern time. First down and 10 for Tyrod Taylor and the Hokies. Stands and delivers. For nine, make it 11 yards, and that's Boykin as we check in with Matt Weiner in New York. All right, Matt, and here, 17 16. We had five lead changes in the first half, a scoreless third quarter. Handing off to Williams. Hanging on and bringing him down. 
keep kind of thinking to myself up here that boy Virginia Tech maybe they can put something together get some points on the board and get back into this game and you forget you look at the score and despite all these numbers look at the top that's the only number that matters right here thanks to some special teams and some big plays they've been able to hang in there not only hang in there have this one point lead Here's Williams again ever since he fumbled that punt leading to an Alabama score he has been possessed back there in the backfield he now has 11 carries for 37 yards and he's been running hard not even a hint of a fumble even with the loss of Darren Evans I, I, I think this backfield of Virginia Tech is going to be fine I, th I think they've got a great combination of three backs with Williams Oglesby and Wilson The thing to watch now in this fourth quarter is Tyrod Taylor. If this defense is at all tired, Taylor demonstrated on one run in the third quarter that when he gets to the corner, he's plenty dangerous. He's eight of 16 tonight for only 86 yards. McElroy is thrown for 145. Here he is on third and one up under center. That looks like a tie knots being called by Alabama. That looked like McLean was up there. Nick cannot be too happy about this timeout on third and one. We'll take a break. Seventeen sixteen, Virginia Tech leads Alabama. A ninety eight yard kickoff return in the first half. Proving Hughes. This is third and one for the Hokies. Williams hitting a backfield, shakes free, first and ten. And then just kept on going. Alabama got exactly what they wanted with penetration from Hightower and Reamer, their linebackers. They're there to make the play. But Williams slipped off them. And it's against the Hokies. Holding offense 75 10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul and Pete third down. That's a backup. No sell right here. Trying to get a, a kick out block on Barron the safety. He just locks the right hand is locked up on the safety and I think the, the clearly a hold but the, I think the back Williams probably picks up the first down without that. So on the big third down through the slant misfired on it tried to pick up Cole and it'll be punting time for the Hokies. Bowden against Arenas one more time. There's been some really close calls on the pass interference it probably could have gone either way and that was one that I'm sure Virginia Tech fans at home are saying where's the call called Chancellor earlier on one against Julio Jones where's the call on that one Arenas on the 31 yard line dances left now looks for daylight down at the 46 yard line The pressure is starting to mount on this one. It's a one point game. You're watching Saturday Night Football on ABC. 1251 remaining here in Atlanta, Alabama, trailing by a point with the football on their own 46 yard line. Ingram and from the pistol, McElroy's going to go deep, going for it all, and it's complete to the five yard line to Marquise Mays. Tell you what, Greg McElroy told us, and he's now proving it tonight, that he is most comfortable throwing the deep ball. A little bit of a play action fake to Ingram. 
trying to get the defense to respect that. It's the second time tonight we've seen him throw it over the shoulder of a receiver deep downfield and all, both times behind Cam Chancellor, the safety. The first one was Hanks, and this time he finds Mays. 48-yard game. Wrong touchdown, Alabama leads it. is coming back because they will go for two. Up by five. They'll try to make it a seven. So McElroy in the span of 28 seconds goes 54 yards in two plays. Back of the end zone, Colin Peak, the tight end. First, it was Ingram. McElroy firing, and the tight end is all alone. Stay tuned after the game. Your late local news over most of these ABC stations. And if you're wondering about Sports Center, they have another game over there. It'll be next on the air at 1:30 a.m. Better on the West Coast, where it's 10:30 p.m. Roberts back deep awaits the tip and kick. And this is Morgan. They do not give Roberts a chance. Ball loose. And Alabama appears to have jumped on it. They've got it. The referee just signaled they've got it. That is Chris Rogers. Chris Rogers does a good job of punching the ball loose. He's held up right there by Green, and eight gets in there and punches the ball loose well before Morgan goes down. It's kickoff coverage team from Alabama, almost as relentless as the defense tonight. With the exception of the one return. Thank you. <laughs> I knew you were getting ready to give me that kidney shot there. <laughs> what a turn of events here. Last three or four plays. Just ripped it out of his arm. Time well spent in the weight room. Yeah. But Jim McElwain, the offensive coordinator from Alabama, the adjustment here and what he makes. Here's double coverage again on Julio Jones. So what does he do? He finds a way to get another, re another receiver isolated one-on-one. -on -one. This time it's Mays against, again, the big, tall safety cam chancellor. And they come right back the next play with the power running of Mark Ingram into the end zone. Two plays, and just like that, the Crimson Tide are into the end zone. Nick Saban talked to us this week about the importance of leadership emerging for the 2009 Alabama team, especially the way last season ended. And in a grudge match like this, that might be happening down there on his football field for the Crimson Tide. Frank Beamer hoping his defense can hold that line. Down by seven. Ingram slant. Daylight. Inside the five, first and goal. The tide rolling right now. Great blocking up front. 
the big tight ends able to get downfield and make a nice block and that's something that's important when you want to be able to get into that next level but it all starts up front Alabama controlled the line of scrimmage on this play and in the previous play for the touchdown to give Mark Ingram finally some room to run Stuff this time, and it'll be second down. Third and goal. Virginia Tech defense obviously realizing that they've got to take Ingram away. They have to slow down Ingram and the way the offensive line has been kind of creating that penetration, allowing him to find those seams. The last two plays hunkering down to create this third down. Again, I. This is where Colin Peake, the tight end, is, is we saw it in the two-point play. They love to try to find it in the back of the end zone. Time was running down, didn't get the play in quickly enough to him. You can read it on McElroy's face. Save an upset over on the sideline. You know, coaches are a stubborn bunch. You look at Ingram, he's gonna love this timeout, actually. He needed, he needed <laughs> to catch his breath. But you remember a short time ago, Upchurch turned it over when he was hit from behind and stripped. You, you think they're not about to put him back in there and give him another shot? Nope. They were leaving Ingram in there. And he was exhausted. And a reminder to stay tuned for the Ford wrap up coming up right after this game. John and uh, Jesse Palmer will have that for you. And uh, underway and some wild happenings as usual. It's just another college football season. Oklahoma loses. I've got to have a shout out to Andre Ware. I was hosting college football live back in Bristol. Andre was working it with me and he said out of the blue that BYU would upset Oklahoma and I jumped on him with both of my cleats. I said what are you talking about? Did he predict Sam Bradford would go down with that injury? <laughs> I go. he, but he picked it. Now you give him credit. I'm telling you right now, and it was several weeks ago when he did it. So Andre, if you're with us here tonight, I'll be calling you up this week, my friend, to find out what's <laughs> going to happen like in the NFL next week. <laughs> <laughs> they got a couple of suicide pools to worry about. Here comes McElroy. Fire back in end zone. Incomplete. He was looking for the tight end, and that time a linebacker had stuck right with him. Didn't have quite the daylight that they had, and uh, so leading by seven, no hesitation in sending Tiffin back out. He is three of four here tonight. He's locked in there. Locked in. He wanted peak in the back of that end zone. Talked about it before the snap, and Rivers thinking the same thing. Wallace in cleared the back of the end zone. 20 yard. Over on the left. Slices it through. Remember, he missed from the right. Here tonight, a little breathing room for the Crimson Tide. But there's still ten and a half to go. In the background of our two competitors' helmets, Stone Mountain, Georgia. And we get ready, and that sensational freshman prospect, David Wilson, has gone back as one of the return men. Remember, he's got breakout speed. Roberts and Wilson. And Roberts steps in front of the freshman. He had the 98 yard return. Dashes daylight. Freshman gets out on top of him. And he's pushed out of bounds at midfield. What great hustle by number four. And there's a penalty flag on top of it. What Tyrell Roberts wants the ball in his hands and 
He definitely, every single time he gets a, an opportunity on a kickoff return, he seems to find a seam. Dead ball, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, number 36 on the kicking team. 15 yard penalty, then the run, automatic first out. That's Chris Jordan. He's a sophomore linebacker. Brent with 10 unanswered points by Alabama, and the momentum starting to favor them. This, this return is big, and then another mental mistake by Alabama. And look at the field position for Virginia Tech. But remember, Tech has only 126 yards of offense here tonight. Taylor dumps in underneath. That's Boykin. Well, let's take a look at the Pacific Life game summary. It's been a story of special teams, or especially early in the game. Darrell Roberts had a 98-yard kickoff return to give Virginia Tech the lead, even though Bama was controlling things. And then it's been some mistakes uh, by Virginia Tech, turning the football over, and Alabama's, for the most part, controlled this football game. Well, without a huddle, now a late check over with the coaches on the sideline. Trying to conserve time, down by 10. Williams dashing for the first down. Williams across the 20. Williams across the 10. Diving for the pylon. God looks like it's going to be marked about the one-yard line. Are you talking about jumping right back in the thick of things? Absolutely. And a great job up front by the offensive line. And then a poor angle taken by Mark Barron, the safety, coming up in run support. He came in tight, and he gave Williams plenty of room to cut to the outside. But give credit up front to that big offensive line and the vision there of Ryan Williams. This might be, they may take a look at this. They may take a look at this one. I am not so sure he didn't stay in the air as the ball was coming inside the pylon. Now we'll have to take another look at it. But instant replay immediately stopped it. But I, I agree with you. And really, it may come down to whether or not his right foot as he started to take off into the air did it go out of bounds if his foot stayed in bounds I think you're right I think he was able to get the ball across the uh, the goal line watch his right foot as he goes up into the air did it stay it stayed in bounds it's a matter of where the ball broke the plane and then his butt hits the ground and where's the ball he's crossing over the end zone well, that looks like a touchdown to me it's the replay running it back and forth. They're taking a look at that foot here upstairs. SEC crew. Even if they don't give him the touchdown, keep in mind it's going to be a first and goal for the one. Just when you think that Alabama's in control of this game, the big kickoff return, the 15-yard penalty, Virginia Tech opening up some holes for Ryan Williams. This is a great bit of effort by number 34. Yep. There's one, you know, little things, Herbie. I'll never forget that freshman running back coming back in front of the return man and, and throwing a block on that kickoff return over there, Wilson. And he even started behind him. Yes. Remember, because he was about to make the catch, Ooh. and Robert stepped in front of him. He's five, ten yards behind him. Didn't give up on the play. You love, you love to see true freshmen being put into this atmosphere and having a chance to do just a, a thing like hustling downfield and coming up with a block that might spring the back of the return man another five or ten yards. After further review, video shows that the runner broke the plane of the goal line with the football. Therefore, the run is overturned. Touchdown. That's the right call. Frankel go for one to make it a three-point game. 9.22 left and a 32-yard touchdown run by Williams. His second touchdown of the game. The first time he's kicked since high school. Walgren adds the point. We've got a three-point game. 
nice block here by the right guard, James Brooks, who goes up to pick up Hightower, and then the vision to find the seam by Ryan Williams, and of course later the effort. Look at 68 right there, just get enough of Hightower. A poor angle taken by Mark Barron. He comes too far to the inside. I'll tell you what, the redshirt freshman gave everything that he had to get the football into the end zone. This is an offense that has struggled all night long, and even down 10 in the fourth quarter, they're not giving up, which is a, which is a trademark for a Frank Beamer football team. we got a long way to go in this one. Seventy-four thousand nine hundred fifty-four, the fourth largest crowd in Georgia Dome history. Seventy-four, nine five four, and they have seen a damn. that on Thursday September 24th the whole world will black out at exactly the same time everyone will see a flash of their own future and mankind will take on the greatest mystery it's ever faced ABC's new series flash forward will premiere at 8 7 central on ABC. What looked like a safe 10 is now a shaky three. Ingram the running back. Under eight, third, eight seconds here on the play clock. Ingram sweeping left. Finding daylight. Explodes into Virginia Tech territory. Big left tackle, the junior college transfer, James Carpenter leading the way. And how about the vision and then the burst by number 22, Mark Ingram, slides to the outside and then finds that crease and gets upfield in a hurry. He's starting to find his own little rhythm right now with a career high, 131 yards and counting. Going over 100 with that 39-yard run. And now they will give him a blow, and Terry Grant comes in. Grant goes in the same direction. Penalty flag is flying. Holding off at 77. It's a 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Eight forty two remaining. It's the ninth penalty tonight, Brent, against Alabama. Ingram back on the field. He'll take the direct snap and barge right straight ahead, muscling his way to the 36 yard line, almost back to the original line of scrimmage. Big fellas up front, the last few drives starting to push Virginia Tech around. And not only that, boy, Mark Ingram, talk about first game. What kind of shape are these teams in? Seems like Mark Ingram's getting better the longer this game goes on and the more of a pounding he's taking said during the week he is no longer a freshman he has the body of an NFL running back he is in great shape second down and 11 play action McElroy got his tight end first down at the 17 yard line 
So Peak again comes open in the middle. That's 19 more yards. Now they've been going after Cam Chancellor. This time they're going to try to find a spot between the linebackers and the safety. Nice soft spot and a good job of breaking down the route by Peak to not continue forward into where the defender was sitting and waiting for him. Good job of communication by a first time starting quarterback in McElroy and Colin Peak coming off a transfer year. On first down, the handoff to Ingram. Tries to find a hole on the right side. Get into the red zone. We start talking for both of these football teams. Three points. Can Alabama continue to move down and put a touchdown up on the board? Or can Virginia Tech hold them to three and keep this a one possession game now that we're under seven minutes? Some big downs coming up for both these teams right here inside the red zone. Second at 11, rolling hard to the right. Comes in underneath. Ingram, touchdown, Alabama. A beautifully designed play as Mays cleared the corner out. And they brought the running back in underneath. And it was daylight for Ingram. What a beautifully designed play. The linebacker Jake Johnson completely bent on the play action, followed the back, and didn't have time to get out to Ingram. Tiffin tacks on the extra point. Right here, the play action takes him over. And the bootleg out here, he doesn't have time to react. Watch 36. It's his responsibility. He bites on the play action, doesn't have time to get out there. And Ingram catches the ball with, again, room to work. And when you give Ingram with his, his power and speed room out in the flat like that, there aren't, I don't think there's a safety or a linebacker that can slow him down out there. But for a game that hasn't had much offense, the last 15 or 20 minutes it's been pretty exciting. Raise your hand if you saw 58 points coming <laughs> in this one. <laughs> I'll tell you, if I'm an Alabama fan, I'm sitting there looking at a sophomore in Ingram and McElroy as a redshirt junior, thinking about leadership and how important the intangibles are of being a championship team. You've got to be pretty happy for the first game and the way this team has battled through some adversity. Both these teams have battled through a lot of adversity to compete. Some long, hokey faces right now. But there's still six and a half minutes to go. We've already had 25 fourth quarter points scored after a scoreless third quarter. Unfortunately for the Hokies, 18 by the Crimson Tide. Stephen on the ground now. Trying to slow down these great return men. Wilson, the freshman, Stop short of the 20 yard line. A reminder again, 7 Eastern NASCAR Sprint Cup Series continues right here in Atlanta. Only two races remain before they start the chase. That'll be here and of course at Richmond next Saturday. And this was the nationwide series tonight. And Kevin Harvick beats Kyle Busch and Junior to the finish line. First down and 10. And a whistle prior to the snap. Dead ball, full start. 75 offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. No sound. And it'll be first and 15. Taylor throwing middle, but he threw behind his receiver. Incomplete. Roberts, number 11, was the intended target. 
as if the Alabama pass rush hasn't been tough enough for Virginia Tech to deal with. Now they're just pinning their ears back and coming after Tyrod Taylor. It gives you an idea of the, the ball control and the time of possession and how it has favored Alabama throughout most of this game. It's really not a good indication of the way the game has gone as far as the score. Alabama bringing pressure on Tyrod and he'll run away from it. Take it out of bounds at the 17 yard line and it'll be third down. That was Barron, the safety. It was part of the plan coming into this game was to use Mark Barron at times as a blitzer to chase Taylor out of the pocket and also at times to use him as a spy to kind of follow Taylor to try to bring him bring him down and if in fact he started to use his feet a lot but we have not seen that part of his arsenal tonight from Tyrod Taylor trying to run the football late substitution they're going to go with three down linemen extra defensive back on third and long in trouble linebackers got him Rolando McLean trying to make up but when he lost his composure earlier in the game, he sacks Taylor and forces a punt. Brett, watch number 62, Blake to Christopher. This is what Alabama will do to you. He doesn't touch anybody. It's because he's confused with the look from Alabama. It's a great illustration of what Alabama can do to you. Right, The right tackle, Blake to Christopher, didn't touch a soul because he didn't know if he should go to his right or to his left. Meanwhile, Orlando McLean went right by him. Arenas will attempt to put this in the W column right now. And he's got a single for a fair catch. Bowden's done a superb job against one of the finest pump returners in college football. Well, we are told by some that's at least two weeks sideline. We'll wait to see about that. Ingram muscling his way for 11 more yards. I'll tell you, I love the look of Mark Ingram. You and I saw him this week and kind of both looked at each other and said, well, this guy is going to have a huge year for Alabama. It's an offense that's built around being physical, built around their ability to run the football. Occasionally they'll go play action, occasionally throw it downfield to Julio Jones. But Mark Ingram is the key to Alabama football in 2009 on the offensive side of the ball. He sets the tone and everything comes off of him. David wants him to work on the clock right now with a 10 point lead and 417. Just keep muscling. Of course, it stops on a first down, but here is Nick. I want, I want to tell you a little anecdote about Nick Saban. So he's talking about how visible his life is as a coach over in Tuscaloosa and how careful you have to be, and we're just chatting about that and this and that. And he says, I. I gave up drinking. He said, when I go out, I don't even get one beer or a glass of wine. He said, I just gave it flat up. Because if you go out and this team loses, you go from having one drink to being a drunk. So I just gave it up. Now, that is discipline, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> In my case, not going to happen. <laughs> I can't wait for a cool one after this, Dandy. <laughs> 344. Oh, mercy. <laughs> But I, you, you sure know, you want to join me for some Sports Center hits? <laughs> <laughs> we got all night tonight. Uh, I love you, my friend. You gotta get ready for that NASCAR race tomorrow. Let's see. <laughs> so, what's the difference between the cup and the chase? Well, the cup and the chase, and you know, Is it's the same uh, thing. It's like the uh, the golf playoffs? at the end of the season. It's the playoffs. So you, you qualify the drivers, and they're the only ones oh, who okay. can win the championship okay. trophy. Okay. Okay. So you got to get the dirty dozen in there, and they arguably are the best. And. Uh, they have come back now with Roy Upchurch. Remember how hard Upchurch ran, and then unfortunately, Russ Grimm's son knocked the ball out of his hands. And that is number 26, Cody Grimm. He's a linebacker for Virginia Tech. And that is, uh, you might remember the great Russ Grimm, now coaching in the NFL. Well, that's his son. Talking about NASCAR, you, you and Lisa, while I was in a game day meeting, you guys had a little bit of fun, I guess, <laughs> going around the track. Yeah, we did indeed. Let's do it, baby. Yeah, baby. Lock and load. Pull on some keys now, baby. Yahoo!
What good was my man? He was cranking out of here. You have no idea. You got a little close to the bird. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> you guys, I'll tell you what, you said, I mean, you've been in Jets, you've done a lot of things. Right. How did that rank up for some of you? Uh, it's right there you, right yeah? now. I'm going to tell you, because they, when they start out, they hit 80, 90 miles out coming out of pit lane, and they take it up to the wall before they turn hard left. Oh. Well, Lisa had never even seen it, NASCAR track. <laughs> Poor Cal. And then he admitted he got it up just a little bit close. You know, they're about six inches from that wall. Right. Because he's looking for that groove up on top that they'll be trying to find tomorrow oh, in that 500-miler. Uh, and it's great fun. Thankfully, there were no other cars on the track. We were out there all alone, okay? Oh, my God. Oh. That's a gutsy. Here is third down. <laughs> up church. Boy, what a what a great uh, game Ingram had. Was he uh, was he hurt down there? Is he uh, shaken up? What a shame that would be with the way he's played. Yeah, he... The last thing you want to see. That's for sure. To the night he's had. Well, we've got a moment here. MetLife is providing uh, some great views of the Georgia Dome and the city of Atlanta. Does not look nice? And MetLife provides coverage of major sporting events while also providing you with guarantees for the ifs in life. Visit MetLife.com today. Let's take a look at this injury here, Irving. It's good to see him up and moving, but game just about in hand you start to worry about things like this looks like he maybe came down right on that left arm but he is up now they'll let this one go on into the end zone and it'll come out on the 20 and you know I think a couple things are obvious here tonight um, I don't know how you feel but SEC West will have their hands full oh yeah with this defense and this oh. football team okay Alabama uh, to me I mean, I they become the, one of the favorites. Well, they're the team to beat in the West. I, I thought at the beginning of the year that they and Florida would come back in this stadium in Atlanta to play for the SEC championship game. And I, after watching them tonight, I, I feel even stronger about that. Their defense is going to end up being one of the top defenses in the country. I think they're better this year defensively than they were a year ago by the time it's all said and done. And I thought their offensive line, three new starters, a new starting quarterback, I thought they settled in and, and really started to kind of hold their own as well. Tyrod Taylor, he'll just take it out of bounds. Now, the other thing, and even though with 245, they could still pull it out, obviously, but it doesn't look like Virginia Tech's going to win this game, but they are going to be a factor in the ACC race. Yeah, I, I think for, they're definitely going to be a factor. I mean, Virginia Tech is the last couple of years they've represented the, uh, the ACC and the BCS, and I think this year, of course, they're, they're definitely a team to look out for, but for them to become a dominant team, I think Tyrod Taylor, I know he wants to show the world that he can throw, but he also, they have to utilize his ability to run as a weapon. Uh, Lisa, what do you hear about Ingram down there? Well, Brent, they're working on his left knee, and they just wrapped him up, wrapped it, that left knee up in some ice. Uh, we're not going to get any more information, I'm told, because it's so late in the game. Earlier, he was kind of jogging up and down the sideline, trying to walk it off, but now he's over here on the bench with ice on that left knee. Well, we just hope it's a slight yeah. bruise yeah, or something absolutely. like that. He's had, a, he's had a Warriors night here, 150 yards, and that touchdown. He also caught one for his second touchdown. Oh, Taylor's hit on the release. Deep and out of bounds. It was a great catch by Jackson, but he was out of bounds. Well, one, of the, one of the corners came on the blitz in Arenas, and the other corner, Jackson, had great man coverage on Roberts. They bring Arenas from the what they call the star position, and the five defensive backs, the nickel comes over the slot. Came down on a blitz and forced the air and throw, and the sidekick Jackson goes up and makes the interception, but out of bounds. Well, they'll go for it on fourth down here with time running down now and down by 10. Sacked at the 19 yard line. Alabama will take over there. 
A victory in hand, leading by 10, 212 to go. And remember the name Marcel Darius, number 57 for Alabama. Nick Saban said he's one of the bright young athletes on this football team. He's a sophomore. And Marcel Darius that time had a chance to go against Ryan Williams, the running back, in pass protection. He sidestepped him, almost went over top of him to show his athletic ability and got in there to make the play. And see, that's the difference, I think, Brent, this year with Alabama, why I think they can be better defensively. Players like Darius, I think they're more athletic and they're deeper on the defensive line. And it's not just all about their linebackers in secondary. I think their defensive line is much better. Here comes somebody we want to watch, the running back, Trent Richardson. Trent Richardson, number one in a lot of recruiting lists, number three, lined up at tailback. And he is going to get, I would think, his first carry. Now, here's a story about this young man. He is out of Pensacola, Florida. He went to the same high school as Emmett Smith, okay? And he broke many of the Hall of Famer's records when he was down at Pensacola. Every school in Florida wanted him. Many of the other schools in the SEC wanted him. He chose Alabama. One of the things he brings to this position, great strength. So, boy, do we want to see him carry the ball. Explodes and keeps battling, baby. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, just because they're all related doesn't mean they always relate. One big straight gay, multicultural, traditional, happy family comedy, modern family, Herbie. Premieres Wednesday, September 23rd at 9, 8 Central. Part of ABC Comedy Wednesday. Got a little right. bit for everybody in there. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever turns you on. Second down now. Got a minute and a half to go. <laughs> there he is again. Young Richardson. Tough night for Tyrod. Thing about Tyrod Taylor and Virginia Tech and Brian Steinspring, the offensive coordinator, they go back to the drawing board and get ready for the rest of their season. You know, they're, they're not going to play too many defenses, if any defense that's as good as this Alabama group. He struggled tonight throwing the football. Richardson right there in that deep eye. McElroy has been efficient as Richardson steps off to the outside. One thing we should mention about McElroy coming from Texas, his father is a high-ranking executive with the Dallas Cowboys. I believe he is the head of marketing for the Cowboys. Mom and dad are here tonight. And uh, McElroy again replaced Chase Daniel at Carroll High School, won the state 5A championship in Texas. When you sit and talk to him, he's already graduated, has his undergraduate degree. He's only a junior. Very, very bright. And, of course, he replaced... Chase Daniel in high school, John Parker Wilson, who could be headed to making the Atlanta Falcons. He played very well the other night right here. And so he's replaced two pretty good ones. Yeah, and, and I think you're going to see, obviously, as a first year starter, the, the more experience he gains, the more he's going to feel comfortable within this system. And remember, it's not built around him and his ability to throw the ball. This is an offense that's, that, again, is physical. They want to run the ball, and they want their quarterback to, as you said, be efficient. Make good decisions. If you have to throw it away and punt, we've got a great defense. Just be smart. And I think you're going to continue to see him take strides in that direction. I think he's going to have a great year. Nick would be very content to, uh, to just run it out here. 17 seconds left on the clock. And Alabama will win a very good season opener here in the Chick-fil-A kickoff game. How about the key plays? Well, there are a bunch of them. Virginia Tech got back into the game after Roberts had the big kickoff return. He had a big night, actually, throughout the night on his kickoff opportunities. This, this kind of changed the momentum back uh, in favor of Alabama. Virginia Tech putting the ball down on the carpet. You know, Alabama took advantage of it. It's a nice throw by McElroy. Getting behind Chancellor is Marquise Mays. Then what it just sort of looked like Virginia Tech might be out of it. Ryan Williams comes back and gives Virginia Tech some life. 
late in this game, we had some offensive fireworks because right back here, Alabama had a chance to come back and show what they could do offensively. And I think in the fourth quarter, you really started to see Alabama take control of the line of scrimmage. And that's why Ingram had such a big night, especially in the fourth quarter. So as we get ready to uh, wrap this up, another reminder that next week in Columbus, uh, Kirk and I and Lisa will be on the air on ESPN. The race from Richmond is on ABC, so Ohio State USC is on ESPN next week. Just a little program reminder there. And uh, we'll see. Uh, we had a discussion about who is going to be the favorite after today. Don't be surprised if USC isn't the favorite coming into Columbus, even though that's a tough venue. So 34 24. Nick Saban at Alabama over Frank Beamer and Virginia Tech two of the best coaches in the business right there folks 498 total yards of offense for the Crimson Tide let's go to Lisa thanks Brent I'm with uh, Mark Ingram Mark first thing I want to ask you is what happened to your knee nothing just got hit on it I'm good it feels fine now yeah they needed me to go back in I could have went back in now it seems like you got stronger as the game went on how did it feel for you it felt good you know they were uh Stopping us early, stuff on the run. You know, the Lions made some adjustments, got a head on the head, and we just made our reads. Now, what changed for you, though? What changed for you? You got big holes in the second half. What changed? We just made adjustments, and the line executed, and I just made my reads and, and cuts and had a big second half. All right, so you're fine for next week? Yes, ma'am. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, Brent? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's good to hear. So there you have it. Ingram with a couple of touchdowns. And Alabama. Goes home to Tuscaloosa with a 10 point win here tonight. 34 24, our final score. Next Saturday, we'll be in Columbus on ESPN when USC takes on Ohio State on ESPN Saturday Night Football at 8 p.m. Eastern. Now, we're going to take you to Times Square for the Ford wrap up with John Saunders and Jesse Palmer. So long, everybody. Take it away, John.